morning and welcome back to Rose's Cafe. Today we're going to make Rose's fish with bean sauce. Now bean sauce is made with bean paste. Uh, bean paste is a common ingredient in Asia in a lot of sauces and stir fries and marinades and other kinds of cooking. Uh, there's many variations of uh, bean paste made that can suit nearly any taste, but most bean paste is typically made from fermented soybeans, sometimes other kinds of beans, and various spices and seasonings are usually added to achieve certain flavors for certain situations. Uh, bean sauce is usually a preparation that's made by adding bean paste to other sauces like soy sauce, oyster sauce, vinegar, and other stuff like that. And the resulting sauce can be used in stir fries and marinades and gravies and things like that. Um, it's pretty easy to find commercially prepared bean sauce in most U.S. supermarkets. Usually it's in the Asian food section. Uh, to find the actual bean paste itself, not so easy unless you live somewhere where there's an Asian food store. Uh, I was able to find uh, some bean sauce in the Asian food section of my local grocery store. Uh, it's made with bean paste, it has some soy sauce and some other uh, seasonings and spices in it. And we're going to use that uh, in order to get the necessary bean paste into our homemade sauce. The other ingredients uh, that's in it uh, pretty much mirror the ingredients we're going to put in our homemade sauce. So hopefully the net result will be just about the same. Uh, the fish we're going to use is going to be red snapper. Uh, uh, the recipe calls for either snapper or grouper. Uh, in the Philippines they would most likely use uh, a fish called lapu lapu which is a species of grouper. Uh, the red snapper was a similar kind of fish that I was able to pick up at my local grocery store. Uh, I'm sure lots of kinds of fish uh, can work just fine in this recipe. First thing we want to do is prepare the fish uh, because it's going to have to marinate for a while. Now I have about a little over a pound here of red snapper filet that I bought at the grocery store. And I'm just going to cut that up into some bite-sized pieces. Now once we have the fish cut up into the bite-sized pieces, we're going to salt and pepper it to taste. And we're going to add just a small amount of sesame oil. I think the recipe actually says half a teaspoon. I'll put just a tad more than that because I like the way the stuff tastes. And the easiest way to get everything coated is just to put it on your bowl and shake it all around. So that that usually gets uh, whatever you're using for marinade uh, coated fairly evenly on the meat you have. So we're going to cover that and we're going to put it in the fridge here where it's going to stay for a while, an hour or so, while we get other stuff ready. Now that our fish has been marinating for a while, we want to coat the fish in a mixture of all-purpose flour and some cornmeal doesn't take a lot to coat all of the fish. Once we have the fish nicely coated, we want to deep fry it in vegetable oil until it's nice and golden brown and crispy. Once the fish are nicely done, they're nice and golden brown and crispy, you want to get them out of the oil and put them on a plate it's been lined with a paper towel to help drain off the excess oil. And once you have all the fish cooked, you want to set that aside. 
Now with the fish cooked, it's time to move on to preparing some of the sauce ingredients. And first thing I'm going to do is peel and grate some ginger. Now, this is a ginger root, and I don't find them all that easy to peel myself. The easiest thing i found to do is to use a standard vegetable peeler like this. And I'm sure that some of you people who are really adept at this watching could probably write in and tell me easier ways to do this. If you could do that, I would certainly appreciate it. Having peeled the root, we're going to grate it now until we have something approximating a tablespoon. Our next task is to slice some chili peppers. You'll notice that these are actually jalapeno peppers, which I actually like better than chilies. You can use whatever kind you like. I like to seed them. <clears throat> the kinds of peppers you use depend on whether you want it hot or not, or mildly hot or sort of hot. Uh, just whatever your favorite kinds of peppers are will be fine. Next, we need to peel and mince some garlic. Uh, oh, in that last segment, by the way, I only used two jalapeno peppers because as I was slicing it up, I realized that I was getting an awful lot of hot peppers there, and I think two rather than three will be plenty of heat in this for me. You know, peeling garlic is not one of my favorite tasks. And if anybody out there knows an easier way to do this, I certainly would appreciate you showing me. Basically, I crush it with the broad, I crush the uh, clove with the broad side of my knife, and that makes it much easier to remove the peel because it sort of cracks and falls away when you do that. Okay, I think the recipe wants me to use oh, about a half a teaspoon of chopped garlic, it says. I like more than that. This is going to be two or three times that amount, but that's okay. And we'll need to chop up just a little bit of onion. Okay, so that and a little bit of vegetable oil uh, will be the guest at our saute party here in a few minutes. The liquid ingredients of our sauce that's going to follow the saute, and I've already, for convenience sake, mixed together in this little cup. Uh, they consist of black bean sauce, which is not quite the same thing as black bean paste, but that's okay. It's, uh, it's a commercial preparation of a bean sauce that's meant to to be used in sauteing and stir frying and such. Uh, it contains mostly bean paste but it also has uh, some oyster sauce and soy sauce and some other ingredients added to it which basically mirror the ingredients we're going to use anyway. It's white wine. Uh, if you wanted to be really really authentic you would probably use um, all some rice wine or something like that. Uh, but I've opted to use some cheap Chardonnay. Here. Soy sauce. The last ingredient is oyster sauce. The last thing we need to chop up is a spring onion, just for garnishing. This guy is kind of big, so I'm just going to use one. One last very important thing that I almost forgot to tell you about is some cornstarch. Have about a tablespoon or a little more of cornstarch dissolved in a cup of warm water. Have that ready at the end because that's going to help us thicken the sauce so it won't be just like brown water. And while the sauteing and the making of the sauce is going on, I'm going to fire up the rice cooker here and I'm going to have a nice bed of uh, white steamed rice to put everything over when we're ready. Now to get the party started, I've heated some vegetable oil in the wok. 
add our onions, garlic, ginger, and pepper. And we're going to saute that until the onions are translucent and everything's nice and fragrant. Once these ingredients are ready, then we can add the liquid portion. And we want to stir that yeah, just for a few seconds. It's going to get very fragrant very quickly. At this point, we want to add about a cup and a half of water and some sugar, about a tablespoon. And we want to bring that to a boil. So now this is boiling, we want to lower the heat to about medium. At this point, we want to add the cornstarch just a little bit at a time to thicken it. I would add just a little at a time, don't get carried away. If you don't add enough, you can always add more, but if you add too much, you've got a mess. That's really hard to fix. You notice I switch to a whisk whenever I'm doing this. I prefer to use a whisk. It keeps uh, everything more dispersed so you don't get a lot of clumping. The bean sauce is about ready now, so it's time to turn off the heat and start plating things up. Now we're going to top that with some bean sauce. And lastly, we're going to garnish it with some of our green onions. So pair it up with your favorite white wine, and it's dinner time. Cheers! Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time at Rose's Cafe. Bye now.